Thank you, Father. Let's just close our eyes for a few minutes. Wherever you're standing in this beautiful presence of our God. Oh, thank you for reviving your church. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. Thank you, Father. As we close our eyes, let's just focus on them for a few seconds, please. Let's focus on them for a few seconds. Thank you, Father. You say in Matthew chapter 16, I will build my church. And the gate of hell, the counsel of the wicked, will not prevail against it. You frustrated the deceitful behavior of the enemy. Let the voices rise from the east and the west against your church and frustration they will inherit. We are the overcoming church, the overcoming families, the overcoming people, the more than conquerors anointing that you have put upon us. We give you thanks this morning. Lord of this altar, the Lord of this church, the Lord of the families of this house, we give you thanks. 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 Call on to me, my people, who have cut a covenant with me by sacrifice. Let them gather in the place of worship to present their sacrifices more than their money, more than their gift and abilities. But presenting their bodies as living sacrifices. Pleasing unto the Lord. Here we are, oh God. You say, my son, give me your heart. That is the sacrifice that is pleasing to you. When we put everything pertaining to us, to our fames, to our names, to our endeavors, our project, even our families, when we set it all before you and we surrender, Lord, you draw pleasure from the heart that is contrite. You draw pleasure from the heart that is broken. You draw pleasure from the humble heart. Those who have chosen to trust you, regardless of the circumstances, because you are the God of all circumstances. And therefore, I give you thanks in the name of Jesus. Can somebody join me? Say amen. amen. Can we give a clap offering to the Lord of this house? Hallelujah. Thank you. You may have a seat in the presence of the Lord. Can we appreciate the worship team? I mean, you guys are just, I don't know what to say, man. You guys are beautiful, so phenomenal, so anointed. It was an amazing worship time. And the Lord is pleased with this. This is just the taste of the things to come. I say this is the taste of the things to come. We are now 15 years, and I spoke to you on the day of the anniversary. A 15 is number one. It is another beginning. That's what 15 stands for. It's one. And I've spoken to you, we are in another beginning. There are new layers that we'll have to set for the next 15 years ahead coming. And so welcome to the labor place where everyone who has a heart for God and a heart of this house, you have something to contribute and to give. We are not counting the number of laborers. We are counting the size of the heart of the people who are here. That was a good word. We are not counting the numbers of the laborers. 
We are counting the size of the heart of the people who chose to still be a part of this vision. God is no respecter of person. <laughs> oh yeah, I have seen him done it so many times, I laugh about it. God loves man, but is no respecter of person. He spoke to me in 2015, even if I find a child who knows my way, I will use him. Amen. This is the time for the humble. This is the time for the valiant. This is the time for those who have put their hand to the floor and refuse it to turn back. God is not looking at the credential of man, but is looking at the heart of man. He said about David, men look at the outward appearance, but I, the Lord, I look at the heart. We're in a season where God is more in tune with his laser focus on the heart of man more than the credentials and the abilities and the demonstrations of what man can say or do. If God build his house from the strength of man, there is no glory for God in that house. If God build your destiny and your project and your business from the strength of man, then there is no glory for God in that business and that business. It is just pleasing God to use man, but at the end of the day, he said, I will build. He didn't say we. He said, I will build my house. I will build my business. I will build my ministry. I will build my family. And the gates, plural, of hell will not prevail against it. If God is for you, who can be against you? Everything the Lord begins by the spirit, the hand of flesh cannot fulfill it. There is no strength in a man to fulfill what God birthed by the Spirit. None. No man will stand before God and say, Lord, you owe me this. All things begin with him. <laughs> Ooh, I love, sometimes I just sit back and watch God do things that is just mesmerizing. And sometimes it doesn't make sense. <laughs> you understand? When he begins to move in his superior wisdom and he begins to sort out certain things in his ability that no man has, you know, you just have to sit back like in the chair and let the pilot run his thing. You understand? Because you have to choose to trust God, even in the valleys. The enemy of God at one time thought that God was a demonstrator. He was only capacitated to do wonders on the mountainside. And therefore, they attacked the people of God in the valley. And said, he is the God of the mountain. If you change the terrain, he is over. So let's go in the valley. Because in the valley, he can fight. And God spoke from the mouth of the oracle. He said, I am the God of the mountain. But I'm also the God of the valley. And everything in between. Hallelujah, somebody. Am I speaking to somebody? It doesn't matter if the enemy drag you down in the water. He is the God of the water. If he drag you in the valley, he is also the God of the valley. Even though you walk through the shadow of death, he is also the master of shadow fighting. Are you, sure? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So regardless of your circumstances, God is able. He is able. Hallelujah, somebody. I would like to speak on a theme very simple. In the weeks coming, we'll have certain meetings happening and so on. I want to come and lend my strength to you. And so we can stand together as a body and just push things through. Somebody say, pushing things through. That's what we're going to be doing. And I'm thrilled and I'm excited. And I can feel spiritual muscles so strong in me, I feel like I can take over a whole mountain. Just like Caleb in his days. He said, I am as strong today at 85 as I was when I was 40. That is the strength God is lending to his people in this season. It is not a man's strength, it's faith. Hallelujah, somebody. Allow you to introduce unto you a very important subject, but before that, I would like we put our hand together for Pastor Aaron. You have done an amazing job last Sunday. Come on, let's appreciate him. Ah, yeah. Amen. He is a pastor, and he has a man who has a word. And you will see that more often. That's why we are here, my wife and I, is to raise up a generation that can run. So we're going to have different gifting coming on this pulpit and minister. We'll make sure we give them insight and directions, and they will do a great work. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Protocol of spiritual enlightenment, as will be our part one. 
I am laboring right now by the Spirit to set layers, all right? So we are in day one. We are in year one in these 15 years. So I will put certain layers. At the end of the survey, I will be meeting with the worship team. We'll have a good time, a short meeting. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You are doing such an amazing job. I always wanted to run and hug each one of you. But, you know, with Corona, we need to step away from one another for a while. But uh, I love you from far in Jesus' name. <laughs> the protocol of spiritual enlightenment. Allow me to speak to you clearly this morning. What the world needs right now is no more philosophy or more knowledge. What the world needs right now, it is spiritual enlightenment in the things of God. We have to enhance our walk with God when it's come to the mysteries of God, when it's come to serving God, when it's come to walking with God. We have to upgrade, and that's what this month is all about, a spiritual upgrade. I think I'm jumping some protocol here. I'm talking about protocol. I would like to welcome everybody this morning. Glory to God. And I would like to welcome our viewers online, cross point people or those who follow us from abroad and have a small group of people following us right now from Washington. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We just want to welcome you. No distance in the spirit. We are connected. What God will do today, it will be beneficial for you and for your descendant and the generation to come. Amen, amen. I was saying, at this season where we are at, we cannot replace spirituality with philosophy. It's now that we have to tap into the higher things of the spirit. We are in a war, and we are in the epic of the battle. This corona is not just a sickness. There is much more happening in the spiritual realm that you can think. I was in Montreal and the Lord spoke to me and said, if I open your eyes to see what is happening right now in the spirit, you will faint. Because we are in the 12 rounds. And the enemy have lost round, round one until round 11. And just like any boxer is throwing everything he got in this last round. He is releasing every demon that has been on pause for so long. <laughs> he is reactivating all the altars that were broken. He is reforming his team. He is remobilizing. He is enhancing. He is launching out no mercy, no holding back. He is throwing everything in like a boxer who knows if they blow the whistle, he has lost the game. And church is our time. The people of God is our moment. This is no time to drop out. This is no time to drop out. It is no time to drop your hand. It is no time to keep your head bowed. This is the time to become more focused. God is looking to reactivate his people because he's pouring out a measure of mercy and he's pouring out a measure of strength. He knows what we are going through as a body, as a church, as families, as a nation, and as the world. This is the word that God himself created. He will not remove his hand from it and said, you guys, it is over. No, it is not over. God is sit sitting on the throne and is not playing catch up. I want to motivate you and inspire you this morning that whatever you may be going through, it is not new because you've been through things like that before. Some of you are sitting here, you are survival of genocide. You've seen worse than coronavirus. Some of you are from certain countries where you escaped, you didn't even have one dollar. Some of you have been abused. Some of you taking advantage of. You have rich level of desperation. And hopelessness, only God knows. This coronavirus is a crisis, but you've seen worse than that. The world has seen worse than this. Don't let the news lie to you. That your death, it is just preeminent and you're going to die very soon. The spirit of death has invaded the world. Everybody is thinking, oh my God, I cannot go here. I will die. I don't want to catch coronavirus. If I catch coronavirus, oh my goodness, I don't know what's going to happen. Fear has entered the heart of people and is not pleasing to God. We cannot live in fear and still try to live in faith. 
It's not possible. We are called the household of believers for a reason. We are called the household of faith for a reason. We are not called the gathering of the people who mean well. We are the household of faith. This is the time we need to demonstrate faith. Faith is not irresponsibility. Faith is standing on the word of God, knowing that God has your back, yes. that God is standing for you. Yes. Faith is to understand Romans chapter 8, verse 31 to 32. If God is for you, who can be against you? Him who did not spare his only begotten son, but give him freely for you and I, how much more will he not give us all things with him? In the protocol of spiritual enlightenment, faith hold the first rank. Amen. Not knowledge, not fasting, not prayer, not spiritual warfare, but faith. Because without faith, we cannot please God. It is by faith that you were saved. If faith was not expressed, your salvation will not have been granted. We are not saved by the amount of prayer we made. Many religions are praying to God, but no salvation. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh to the Father except by me. There is no salvation without faith in Christ. And the enemy is attacking our faith like we have not, never seen it before. Christians doubt more than unbelievers. They have dropped out their ways. They have dropped out their hand out of the ways of God. They are hesitant. The enemy has infiltrated the heart of many people. The level of deception in the world today, we have not seen it in many years. People have been deceived. Not only deceived by the enemy, <clears throat> by self-deception. I'm working too hard on my voice. Self-deception. Self-deception is more dangerous. Yes. Who will bail you out from such? I want to speak to you. You who have been grown in the things of God, who have strength in faith, that you may reach out to those who are weak in faith and motivate and encourage them. Not to drop out of the faith, not to give up, not to run away from God, but on the contrary, to run back to God. Amen. This is no time for you to live for you and you alone. And feel like, you know, as for me and my house, we are okay. No, as for you and your house, it's not your calling. The Bible says in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But 1 John 3.16 said, he has loved us because he gave his life for us. Us too have to give our life for others. I stand against that devil of coronavirus. Beyond the sickness is a spirit. That is creating anxiety. I was listening to some uh, journal news and it said there are more suicide case, suicidal cases in the world today than it has not been before. Yeah. The devil is really seeking whom he might devour. Yeah. He is really the destroyer, the killer. The church can back down. The leaders of the church cannot back down. The people of the church cannot back down. We need to get out of our cocoons and our caves and begin to give the hand of partnership and love and compassion to other people. Hallelujah. Amen. It is one thing for believers to know God. It is another thing for them to know his principle and his protocols. When it's come to his presence. And I believe we can mentor people and teach them the things of the spirit, especially in this season. The factor that makes for relevance in a generation 
or in a nation or in a church or in a ministry or in a city. The fact that that makes for relevance, it is not the skills of men. It is for a man and a woman to put their agendas and their stuff aside and choose to embrace God's ways no matter what. We have become master to engineer's ways so that we can manipulate God to come down and act on our behalf. But when it comes to God to move on the behalf of a nation or the world, the protocol is not given to God by man. As God will give protocol to man to follow. In other words, God has principle and ways by which we have to navigate our lives if we want to see his presence and experience him. Not us telling him how he needs to do things. We have to stop attempting by human means and human skills and wisdom to capture the wealth that God has for us. Because when it comes to the dealing of God with man, God set the parameters. God set the patterns. God give the models. God give the protocol, not man. Not man. Not man. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 6.16 6, says, Thus says the Lord, Jehovah, stand ye in the ways and see. That is the word for the church today. Stand in my ways and then you will see. Not as giving ways to God, but standing in God's ways. And as for the old path, wear the good way and walk therein and you shall find rest for your souls. That's what the world wants. We want rest for our souls. We have to pick up the ways of God, not our ways. We have to make up our mind to embrace God's protocols, God rules, God principles, God's instruction. And only then we will find rest for our souls. But the verse don't feel bad. They said, we will not walk there. The suffering of mankind is the rejection of God's words and God's instruction. And as long as man will keep rejecting God and his word, man will suffer. God has protocols. There is something every one of you sitting here under the sound of my voice you're expecting God to do for you, including myself. And everyone who's watching online, there are something you're expecting God to do for you. But God has ways. God has protocols. God has demands. He has instruction. He has prescription. If we follow the prescription, we will capture the result corresponding. But if we deny the prescription and throw it away, we will walk in suffering. Hallelujah. I want to speak to the people about that unshakable faith. That faith that demands sacrifice. That faith that refuses to give up no matter what. That way faith that does not take no for an answer. The Bible says in Luke chapter 18, Jesus Christ is speaking in a parable. And he said, and he gave them a parable that through that parable that may keep praying without being discouraged. And he gave them the parable of a, of a king that was a wicked king. He said that king feared no man and that king feared not God. Then in that same nation, there was also a woman that was a widow. And the widow went to ask the king to render her justice. And every time the widow showed up, the king will give the answer no. And the widow refused to give up. She kept going. She kept going at the court to see the king until the king said, hold it. This woman, she's giving me headaches. I'm losing sleep because of her. What do I have to lose? Let me just render justice so she can leave me alone. Are you hearing that? 
Is there, uh, uh, do we have some women like that here? Come on, women. It's interesting they didn't talk about a man. They talk about a woman. They said that woman, she just keep punching the king. Bah, bah, bah. Same spot like a boxer. Refusing to give up. Then Jesus said, if a wicked king that did not fear God, not have a respect for man, can give justice to a widow who is hopeless, how much more I, the righteous God, Habo Shakalabaya, will quickly render justice unto you. I come to tell you, our God is righteous and is just and is ready to render quick justice unto you in the name of Jesus. Then Jesus added a question that made me meditate on for many hours. He said, when the Son of Man comes in the earth, will he find faith in the earth? What it meant, will he find that kind of faith, that persistent faith? It's not just faith. It is the faith that still stands strong regardless of the waves. It is the faith that still keeps believing in God and his promises regardless of what is coming against you. Corona or not, financial struggle or not, sickness or not, who rose against you or not. You know, I know in whom I have believed and that he is able. We must be persuaded like Abraham was persuaded. We have to be persuaded like Paul was persuaded. Keeping our faith in this God, who is not a man to lie, nor the son of man to change his mind. If God said it, he will do it. God wants me to tell you, upgrade your faith related to him and to the promises that he has given to you and to your children. God has not changed his mind. He is still in the fulfillment of dreams. He is still in the prayer answering. He is still in Blessing you and lifting you up. He has not changed. Corona cannot make him change. Am I speaking to somebody? Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Nothing. Will I find such faith? First John 5, 4 said, We overcome the world by the things that come from God. Even by our faith we overcome. You will not overcome this demonic oppression that has come on you just because you mean well. No, no, no. It has to be a demonstration of faith. Faith is the weapon that overcomes. The protocol to walk into spiritual enlightenment and to walk in dimension of knowing God begin with an unshakable faith. A faith that refuses and knows I have no other option. The only tool and the only weapon that I have, it is faith in my hands. Hallelujah. Faith in my hands. I have no other option. I can sit and have my crying moment. But at the end of the day, I have to rise up with faith. And choose to believe again. Choose to believe again. I can be dragged in the street, but I cannot lose my faith. Paul said, I fought the good fight of faith. Harabo Shandaya. People can leave you, but keep your faith. Sickness can come, but keep your faith. Financial struggle will rise, but keep your faith. You can be losing your job, but keep your faith. Business can be struggling, but keep your faith. Your hope can be taken away, but keep your faith. Your promises might be dragging, but keep your faith. I must speak to some faith people this morning. Who am I talking to? Keep your faith. Don't give up. He is faithful. His promises are still yes, and they are still amen. I can lose friends, but I'll keep my faith. I cannot keep a job around me, taken from me, but I will keep my faith. My parents can turn against me, but I will keep my faith. Harabo shata parakata. Ligaro si pere maralo si para. Vendu penda kara supela katosta. Things can turn in a direction I never thought it well. And things can rise against you. Challenges can come from every corner. But at the end of the day, brothers and sisters, stand still. I said, stand still and keep your faith. Hallelujah. If you keep your faith, your faith will keep you. 
If you keep your faith, your faith will keep you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. When God called me to faith, he did not ask coronavirus permission. Am I speaking to somebody? When God decided to bless you, he did not call a council and ask them, do you guys feel like uh, Kenya is worthy to be blessed? Do you guys feel like Prophetess Martha is worthy to be called and anointed? Seriously, I, I want your opinion. Um, do, do you really think, you know, that uh, Evangelist Alin, you know, what do you guys think? Can, can I, can we decount here? We are in the election time here. We want to see if the Democrat is going to win or the, 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 the Republican. Okay, let's do the counting here. God didn't do that. God didn't do that. He didn't even consult your parent for you to come on life. Magato Brekata Lafata. The God who called you, the God who chose you, the God who selected you, the God who glorified you, if it's for you, who can be against you? Kasheno Rebo Kasalababa. Kedu Sifa Nako Ifa. What are you talking about? If this God who have foreknew you, if this God who has chosen you, if this God who has selected you, if this God who has anointed you and blessed you and love you, if it's for you, who can be against you? Kedu Isifa Nako Ifa. What are we talking about? Where is the who? We are still looking for him. Oh, nobody encouraged me. Oh, nobody support me. People betray you. If God, who chose you among the crowd without regret, anointed you and called you, <laughs> who he loves you, he believes in you. If people don't believe in you, Kedu si fanako. If wow, somebody say yes, God. Please say it and believe it. Say it again. Lift up your hand and say yes, God. Yes, God. Yes. Kaparama supalakata. Ingere marango to prata sipalayakata. Vero sipalande rebokata. Listen to me. <laughs> Sometimes I just wake up, I'm in my bed and I roll and say, Jesus, you love me so much. You understand? You love me so much. You're about to use me to be a wonder. You're about to shock the world. Because you love me. <laughs> Ooh, even when nobody believed in me, I know you believe in me. <laughs> you will not make the devil be right on my life. It's not possible. Am I speaking to somebody? God. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. The bedrock of Abraham's faith was the word of God, was the voice of God. People hear me. Romans chapter 10, verse 17 said, Faith cometh by hearing the message, and the message by the word of God. Until the message you hear is translated into the voice of God, no faith. We have to hear not about God. We have to hear not even God. We have to hear from God. God can be talking to a people right now and you can witness it, yet he's not talking to you. So hearing his voice means nothing. Are you hearing from him? Is his word directed to you? Or you are just hearing him talking to other people. That does not build faith. Faith is built when the word of God is translated into the voice of God for you. 
It's like you were the only human being on the planet and it's only to you God is talking. That's what built faith. It's not about knowing about what God is saying to the crowd. It's about grabbing what God is saying to me. Until you hear from God, your faith will not stand the test. Noah has to hear from God. To build an ark for years, preach the same message for years and no convert except his family. You know why people give up? Because they have not heard from God. Because the voice of God is irresistible. When you hear the voice of God, no matter what rises against you, you cannot give up. It's impossible for you to give up because it's impossible to resist the voice. It haunts you. It possesses you. When you lose all your strength and people tell you it is over, that it is no longer possible, there is something that still makes you stand. You look like a wacko, irresponsible, madman. How can this person still believe when everything around shows that it's impossible? Because you have heard not from a man. You have heard from God. That's what Noah preached for hundreds of years. A message of righteousness. And no one got converted. And every morning he will rise up to go to his pulpit. And still preach the same message. That the rain is coming. And you must repent and turn to God. No one got saved. God extended mercy to his family and to the animals in pairs. But he kept preaching the same message. Until you hear from God, you will give up. He preached talking about the rain and no rain. Abongo Branda Barago Zubalakata. There is no obvious proof to back up his message. But yet, the only proof he has and he needed was the voice of God. When you hear the voice of God, you cease to consult a human being. You cease to take an inventory of the manifestation of the things around you because you have made up your mind already. Sign or no sign, I have heard from God. It takes a man who hears from God, and I'm closing. To take his only son, Abraham, early in the morning, Genesis chapter 22, verse 2, pack the luggage, heading to Mount Moriah to sacrifice his son that he loved so much because he heard, not God, but from God. And the voice of God is irresistible. Even to move you in a faith that will make you kill your son. That faith I'm talking about, it is born from the womb of sacrifice. It will drag you in a place where you don't give a rip anymore. Just like Esther, your life is no longer the problem. If I perish, I perish. But I know I have heard from God. The Hebrew boys will throw you in the water or you will throw in the fire. Throw us in the fire. They crank the fire seven times. Hell fire. They say, we know. We have resolved in our heart 
because we have heard from our God. And therefore, crank it to seven times or increase the struggle to hundred times. I will not turn away from the ways of the Lord. Amen. I have heard from God. Let bow ahead. The faith that is born from sacrifice. It is the faith that will withstand you even the greatest trouble. There is a protocol for spiritual enlightenment. And it begins with such faith that you just hear me talk about. It is not an emotional faith. It is not a romantic faith. It is not a feeling good faith. It is a faith that demands sacrifice. Because it is built on the voice of God. That is irresistible. Maybe you are here listening to me. And you have lost faith in some areas of the promises of God. You have heard today. Not God, but from God. They've sent me this morning to awaken that faith that was struggling and dragging behind. He sent me behind today to be able to infuse supernatural download of word that become the voice of God. That your faith will awaken today. That you will believe again today. Magodobo shikalabaya. All that God is awaiting this morning is for your spirit to cry out to him. Yes, Lord. I won't back down. I won't turn back. I won't run away. I won't give up. I will stop complaining. I will stop murmuring. I will remove my eyes from me. And I will keep my eyes on you. I have heard your word this morning. Faith is rising in my spirit this morning. I bless your name, O oh God. We are standing faithful in your ways. Thank you for strengthening the faith of this mother who was on the bridge to just give up. Thank you. For strengthening the faith of this young man who was in the place of confusion, ready to turn back. Thank you for strengthening the faith of this family that this morning, by the oracle from your mouth, they have accepted in their spirit that it is possible. Yes, it is still possible. Yes, it is still feasible. Yet we can do it because you are with us. Because your word is unresistible. I give you thanks. I want this morning we all stand up on our feet right now. I know we can come to the altar. But I would like we speak from our heart. Lord, I surrender. I surrender. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. I surrender. And I surrender. Surrender everything to him this morning. To you. Leaving this lack behind. Withholding nothing. Don't withhold on anything. Just let it go. Withholding nothing. Give it all to him. Give it all to him.
Give him your children. Give him your ministry. Give him your business. Give it all to him. Holding nothing. We're holding nothing. Holding nothing. Holding nothing. We're 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 holding nothing. This morning we hold nothing back. But yet without hesitation, he released it to God. As precious as the boy was, the one who has come to remove his shame, yet hearing from God, he released the boy to God. This morning we chose to hold back on nothing. All the worries, all the fears, anxieties, no matter what, offenses, we choose not to hold on such. We release them to you on your altar. Thank you for awakening our faith to stand strong on your word. The voice behind every word from your heart to us. We give you thanks in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody's been encouraged, somebody's faith been lifted up this morning. Come on, let's give a clap offering to the Lord.